Now Descartes is going to start his ontological argument. Remember, it's going to work like the ge geometric proof works. And he's going to start with the assumption, he's already told us that, that God has all perfection. He's a supremely perfect being, he ha which means he has all perfe perfection. So that's the basic assumption for Descartes' ontological argument. That's where it starts. Now, based on that, he thinks, that, and he says that you know, necessary existence or existence is a perfection, right? And if you think about it intuitively, if you're thinking between something that exists and something that doesn't exist, the one that exists is one that you prefer. That is, if somebody was going to offer you either a, uh, a real diamond or that is an existing diamond or a non-existing diamond, I think you'd prefer the existing diamond, which is sort of the concept behind it. Well, in addition to which, we see that same way, it's almost like axioms in geometry, if you know if God has necessary existence, then God exists. So from one, you know, one tells us he has all perfections, he has necessary existence, so he has to have, you know, he has to have necessary existence. But if he has necessary existence, remember when we're talking about the cosmological argument or Descartes version, we we're talking about it. I'm sorry, not the, the not Descartes version, but rather the standard version. We're talking about necessary, you know, necessary existence, um, and there are a couple of ways of thinking about it. You know, it was all that necessary existence means it always exists, or it means it has to have existence, meaning that existence is part of the concept. But the third premise just say, look, if existence is part of the concept, then God exists. And from one, two, or three, we get God exists. Straightforward argument and alleged to have geometric certainty. Now, at this point, you might be scratching your head saying, you know, this is sort of the three card Monty of proofs of God's existence. Where did, how did he pull these things out? And it's nice to think about that, but remember, when we look at arguments, we can say two things about an argument. Uh, that is, by way of criticism. We can say either the conclusion doesn't follow logically from the premises, but in this case it seems to, or one of the premises is false. So, it's, so that is the first, the first criticism, it's invalid, and the second criticism it's unsound because it has a false premise. But when we look through the premises, they all seem pretty reasonable. God has all the perfections. It's just sort of the definition of God. Necessary existence is a perfection. You know, if you had a choice between you know, a check for a million dollars that exists or one that doesn't exist made out to you, You'd like to take the one that exists, and the one that necessarily exists has to exist even better than the one that just kind of contingently exists. So all the premises seem true, but nonetheless, we still think that somebody's pulled the wool over our eyes. So you might want to take a few minutes before going on to the next uh, part of this uh, set of presentations and think about what is it that's wrong with this argument and see if you can figure out how and where it goes wrong.